Be sure to share, like, subscribe, and comment down below and turn on notifications by clicking on that bell icon. Joe DiGenova says that former CIA Chief John Brennan was leading the counterintelligence operation against Trump. Former U.S. Attorney Joe DiGenova joined Laura Ingram Tuesday night on the Ingram Angle to discuss the latest developments in the Mueller Special Counsel witch hunt. Joe DiGenova told Laura that former CIA Chief John Brennan was the head of the group of people who created the fake counterintelligence investigation of Donald Trump. That may explain John Brennan's continued threats against this president. On Monday, Brennan blamed President Trump for Hamas terror operations as well as I previously reported. He ever does is trash. <laughs> Joe, De Joe, Joe DeGeneva knows this. Trash anyone who questions what the Justice Department has done, including, of course, Devin Nunez. Let's discuss all these developments with former U.S. Attorney, as I said, Joe DeGeneva, and former federal prosecutor, Sidney Powell. Joe D., let's start with you. Uh, this was wild. I mean, we, first we learned yesterday that the FBI had approached Oleg Deripaska in September of 2016 and floated this collusion theory to him involving Manafort. Manafort's colluding with the Russians. He just laughed, basically laughed them out of the room. He's like, I don't even like Paul Manafort. That's ridiculous. As far as we know, not revealed in any way to the FISA court. If it was, they should come clean on that. And uh, now new concerns about this, uh, this source that they were trying to keep, uh, keep quiet. Uh, where are the state of things now? Uh, the, the state of play now is, is that it is abundantly clear that there was no legitimate basis even for a counterintelligence investigation, let alone a criminal investigation. Uh, it is quite obvious that John Brennan was at the head of a group of people who were going to create a counterintelligence investigation against Trump by creating false information which was going to be fed through Carter Page and fed through George Papadopoulos so that it would be picked up reported back to Washington and provide the basis for a counter a fake counterintelligence investigation and it was all Brennan's doing and that is why the Justice Department is viciously fighting revealing everything they can about the source in London who everybody knows the identity explain of explain the source in London the source in London was another person who was feeding false information to George Papadopoulos and others about collusion which did not exist and everybody knows who he is and it's just a matter of time before his name comes out Sydney yes they are manufacturing it all I think they started with the abuses of the FISA intelligence the FBI gave unfettered access to raw FISA intels at least as far back as 2015 to at least two private contractors. I would guess Fusion GPS is one of them. And I think they used that raw FISA intel to put together their fake narrative and essentially recycled it through Christopher Steele and other people with probably input from others in the intel community, people at the State Department like Sidney Blumenthal and of course Peter Stroke and his role in it. It's, it's gonna be something when we get the IG report. Uh, Sidney, you wrote a piece positing that perhaps Mueller granted Comey immunity. Can you tell us a little bit about that theory and why that might be the case? Well, Mr. Comey is parading around the country very cavalierly and seemingly without a care in the world. He's contradicting his own statements to Congress and his public statements out on his book tour. Uh, and Mr. Comey is number one known for protecting James Comey. So I think it's entirely possible, and we certainly should be asking the question as to whether Mueller has given him absolute immunity. I think that's a distinct possibility, and as I said at the end of the article in the Daily Caller, inquiring minds want to know. And Joe D., we never really learned, did we, how many people got immunity in the Hillary email investigation? Did we ever even learn whether who got what immunity or when? We, we, we know that the number Cheryl of immunities... Mills yeah. Yes, we, we, we know that a, a great number of people got immunity who never should have gotten immunity. But I want to I get on something that Sidney said that's really important. People don't realize that there are two court opinions from the FISA court in which the court outlines how illegally FISA intelligence information was given to private contractors that the FBI was using. All of that was designed for the unmasking and then the leaking of the names and that was all done by private contractors the FISA court objected to it and it never stopped
I want to and play it was done the, deliberately at the FBI, Laura. It was done deliberately. If you look at correct. footnote 69 in the FISA court decision, FBI lawyers signed off on it. Uh, I want to play for you guys uh, the former acting attorney general. Remember, she's the one who marched those agents over to Mike Flynn for that uh, impromptu interview in January of 2017. And now uh, she's speaking out again. Let's watch. There is a time-honored tradition at the Department of Justice, at least since Watergate, that is not partisan, that there is a wall between the White House and the Department of Justice when it comes to criminal investigations or prosecutions. And there have been moments where there's been a slip here or there, but everybody had, has recognized that that's aberrational, that the rule, the norm is, is that the White House doesn't have anything to do with criminal investigations. So, Sally Yates is full of it. Not only that, let's, let's remember how this whole thing got started. She claimed that Flynn violated the Logan Act by doing everything that was perfectly legal. Where is she on John Kerry on foreign soil? Yeah, have we heard from her on Where, that? Where's Sally Yates on John Kerry and the Logan Act? I mean, and Hillary she, Clinton. She is a, Sally Yates is an embarrassment to the Department of Justice. She's a hot dog lawyer who never should have been acting attorney general. Sydney. Want to, want to tee off on Sally Yates, one of our favorite people? <laughs> Go ahead. One of our favorite people, yes, to help flame, frame General Flynn, barred the Inspector General from any access to the National Security Division of the Department of Justice when the machinations were happening and Bruce Orr was running a back channel between the FBI and Christopher Steele after mm -hmm. Christopher Steele was fired from the FBI for lying to them. Of course, none of that was revealed to the FISA court in any of the approvals, and she signed at least one of them for Sydney, applications. I, 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 Sydney, when I'm listening to Sydney, don't you just want her to say, oh, bless her heart. Bless, <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're one step away saying, oh, bless your heart, Sally. I lo love you, but boy, did you screw this up. Yeah. But she's a partisan. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's a, a partisan hack. Sally, animus toward this S president. Sally Yates is a partisan hack who had an animus toward Donald Trump, and she, she let it infect the professional work of the Department of Justice, and I believe that some of the things she did were criminal. Uh, thanks to you. That's both. why sure. she was brought in. Oh, oh so, so that's that's uh, Sydney's. Uh, she was theory. a consigliere. Oh, she was brought in specifically to do that stuff. Absolutely, Sydney's Ex absolutely exactly. Right. Everything always goes. Laura, back you got to gotta check out my new website, creepsonamission.com. Oh well. That be sure to share, like, subscribe, and comment down below and tell me how you feel about this report. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Let's make America great again. I appreciate you. Peace.